These videos are offered on a pay-what-you-like basis. You can pay for the use of the videos at my website. There is a link to my website in the info box. The address is www.freelance-teacher.com slash videos dot htm or you can just use the link in the info box. By the way, I also offer tutoring via Skype and you can find more information about that Skype tutoring service at my website. Thanks. Now, do you remember what type of particles are in the nucleus? Protons and neutrons? That's right. The protons and the neutrons are in the nucleus. And then outside the nucleus is the electrons. And those are the main components of the atom. Protons and neutrons inside the nucleus and electrons outside the nucleus. So the first thing to do is to understand the typical notation that they're giving us. <coughs> this is the typical notation for writing down the information about a nucleus or a subatomic particle. The X here stands for the element. So the X could be helium or hydrogen or uranium or whatever. In chemistry, we use X for halogens, but here in physics, we're just using X for any element. So this could be any element. Do you remember what the Z stands for? Mm, now, the Z is what we call the atomic number. Do you remember the idea of the atomic number from chemistry? The atomic number of the element? What does the atomic number of the element tell you about it? So that's the number of protons. Oh. But let's stop and think about a proton for a second. Do you remember what the charge is on a proton? Plus one? Or Plus one. That's right. Well, it depends what units you're using. In coulombs, it would be 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs, right? A proton would have a charge of 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs, but that's not a very convenient number to work with because it's so small. So the units that we usually use actually when we're working with nucleuses and subatomic particles, we do usually just the unit, use the unit E for charge. And E just stands for the amount of charge on a proton. So we, instead of, uh, we can simply say, instead of saying 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs, we could just say the charge is 1e. So a proton would have a charge of plus 1e, where e is just that elementary charge. And what's the charge on a neutron? Um, zero. Zero. That's why they're called neutrons from neutrons. So if you think about it, there's another way to interpret the atomic number. A more general way to interpret the atomic number is it tells you the charge of the nucleus. Doesn't the atomic number tell you the charge? Because the number of protons is the charge. Yeah. For example, if you have five protons and seven neutrons, what would be the charge of that nucleus? Plus five. Plus five E. That's right. And what would be the atomic number of that nucleus? Twelve. Wait, seven. No, five. Which one? Five. Five, because the atomic number is just the number of protons. The atomic number is just the number of protons. Well, that shows what I was saying a second ago, that the atomic number can also be interpreted as the charge of the nucleus. Since the atomic number is the number of protons, and the protons are the only source of charge in the nucleus, the atomic number also tells you the charge. So that gives us a more general definition. The more general definition of Z is that it's a measure of charge. It turns out that we'll be looking at some things where it doesn't really make sense to treat Z as the number of protons, but we can always treat Z as the charge. And then this number up here on the upper left, that's what's called the mass number. The mass number, that's a measure obviously of the mass of the particle or the nucleus. For example, let's think about a proton. 
<clears throat> Do you remember what the mass is of a proton? Say, what's, what would be the mass number of a proton? What's the mass of a proton compared to a neutron, say? Now, maybe those are weird questions. So I'll just explain that the mass of a proton, well, of course, we could treat the mass in kilograms. We could say that, the, talk about what the mass of the proton is in kilograms. I think it's about 10 to the 10, it's about 10 to the negative 27 kilograms. However, again, that's not a really convenient number. So instead, we'd like to use a more convenient unit so the unit that we use is U, which stands for the atomic mass units. We could use U for atomic mass units, and the mass of a proton then is 1. A proton has a mass of 1 atomic mass unit. A proton has a mass of 1 atomic mass unit. And how about the Z number for the proton? Well, remember that we could treat the Z as a measure of the charge. So what would the Z be for the proton? 1. That's right. So these would be good numbers for a proton, a charge of one and a mass number of one. And now let's do, say, a neutron. What would be a good number for the charge? Zero. Okay, and do you know, if the proton has a mass of one, do you know what would be a good way to say the mass of the neutron? Uh -uh. It turns out that neutrons and protons have almost the same mass. Neutrons and protons have almost the same mass, so approximately, one would be a good mass for the neutron as well. One would be a good mass for the neutron as well, but has zero charge. By the way, you can see why just thinking of Z as the number of protons isn't really general enough, because it wouldn't really quite make sense to think about the number of protons for a neutron, but you can still think about the charge. So Z in more general is the charge. So the neutron would have a charge of zero and a mass of one. We should also think about an electron. That's right. Now, do you know, how does the mass of an electron compare to the mass of a proton? It turns out that electrons are much, much less massive. Electrons have far less mass than a proton. In fact, compared to a proton, we could say the mass of the electron is approximately zero. Now, you should have in your notes, it's not really zero. It does have a mass, but it's so small compared to the proton that we can approximate it as zero. So when we're trying to figure out how massive an atom is, how do you figure out the mass of an atom? Well, you basically just count up the protons and the neutrons. To figure out the mass of an atom, you basically just count up the protons and the neutrons. For most contexts, you can ignore the electrons, because even though they have mass, it's very small, so we can ignore that. The electron has about 1 800, I'm sorry, 1 1800 the mass of a proton, so oftentimes we can just ignore that. Again, you can see, we can't just think of Z as the number of protons. It's important to think of Z as the charge, because obviously an electron doesn't have any protons, but it does have a charge. So that's what this number down here indicates for us. Now let's think about a hydrogen nucleus. Do you know what the atomic number is for a hydrogen nucleus? How could you figure that? How, how would you find that? Where would you look? You would look in the periodic table. Do you have your textbook with you? I forgot ah. that today. Do you happen to remember what the atomic number for hydrogen is? One. That's right. So where would you find that in the periodic table? The atomic number is here. The top number. So in this periodic table, there's a number above the H and a number below the H. But here's the key. You can see the number above is the atomic number. And the number below is what they call the atomic mass, but that actually we're not going to focus on. Uh, that's not the same thing as the mass number. So we're really not going to focus on this, this number that they call the atomic mass. We'll just focus on the atomic number of 1 here. All right, I'm just going to tell you that the mass number of this hydrogen nucleus is 1. So now you tell me how many neutrons does it have? Um, zero. Because there isn't any room for any, the one proton accounts for all the mass. Now, do you remember from organic chemistry, deuterium? You take an organic chemistry? Yeah. Yeah. Um, two. Now, first of all, deuterium is an isotope of hydrogen. Deuterium is an isotope of hydrogen. So what would its atomic number be then? One. One. All isotopes have the same atomic number because they have the same number of protons. Mm -hmm. But the mass number of deuterium is two. So how many neutrons are there? Notice that the number of neutrons is not given directly in the, in the numbers here. 
Neither Z nor A tells you the number of neutrons directly, but if you know both of these, you can figure out the number of neutrons. This is called deuterium because du, du means two, so it has a mass number of two. So this is an isotope of hydrogen. How about, say, carbon-14? What's the atomic number for carbon-14? Six. You found that in the periodic table. So how many neutrons does carbon-14 have? Uh, eight. Right. When we're solving problems, then, it's very important to try to use this type of notation for the atomic number and the mass number. A uh, common mistake, notice that A does not stand for atomic number. It would be very tempting to think it stands for atomic number because it has an A in it. But A doesn't stand for atomic number. It's the mass number. Z stands for the atomic number.